Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Journey of Integral Recovery podcast. Uh, we're back from a holiday break, and we're back here with uh, Douglas Prater, the really good-looking guy dressed in black, and the other guy, no, and Dr. Bob <laughs> Weathers, the other guy, <laughs> and then there's me, right, Chandu <laughs> Pui. So, uh, you know, you got what you got. But anyway, I'm just kidding. It's really good to be back with, uh, we call ourselves the Three Musketeers of, of Integral Recovery Journey, and be back with everybody. It's great, and with you also. And uh, so we're, um, well, we're here to open up the, uh, uh, the conversation, and Bob, you were talking before the uh, the camera went on, the recording went on about the subject of sacrifice. So maybe you'd like to uh, roll with that. Sure, sure. I'm going to pick right up where we were talking earlier, John. Uh, it's been a theme for me, and it's been really up for me this last week. I've had a number of conversations, including with you, Doug, and you, John, that uh, have led me to reflect on this idea of sacrifice. And <clears throat> John was teasing me earlier is that that with my particular typology, either coming from an Enneagram perspective, which John convinces me is, makes me a seven, I'll leave that for those, others to diagnose and confirm, or from a Myers-Briggs slash Jungian typology perspective, I'm an uh, introverted, intuitive, feeling, uh, perceiving type, an INFP, <clears throat> is that in both cases, John was happy to remind me that it makes uh, issues of control <laughs> really challenging. And and the idea of sacrifice to a seven is anathema. And so I think you're right on both counts, Sir John. Um, and as I responded to you, John, I said, I think what's helped me, and then I'll flesh it out just a little bit, what's helped me is to think of sacrifice in its uh, etymological sense. And it literally comes from the Latin roots of to make sacred, to make holy. Uh, and that's a very oh, different sacred, perspective. Sacred. Yeah, that's yeah, really to, sacred, to sacrifice, that's really it. And so that begins to change things. As I was sharing with you, John, it's like maybe it, uh, for a seven or an INFP to let go, I can effectively kind of bypass or move through fears of control or fears of non-pleasure and so on to realize that if I'm sacrificing or making holy for the greater good, I know that that's a motivator for me. And I'm willing to let go of some things if it feels like this is uh, for the sake of a greater purpose. And so to, to just root that then, that root that reflection and personal experience, and I want to invite uh, Doug and John to, to pipe in if you care to, is that uh, over the last several years, John, it's been since I met you over five years ago and working with you, my work lifelong, uh, my entire adult career and pre-adult career has been in academics. <laughs> I went to school forever, and then I worked in school forever. I just never got out of school. And uh, that's really begun to shift in the last several years, owing to my own recovery and my uh, 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 dedication to, to, to bring whatever I'm learning, including with, with you, John, and now with you, Doug, to bring this to others. I, I feel very drawn to uh, this purpose, and it's led me increasingly to sacrifice or to give up what I've been so identified with in my adult career, which has been as an academic, as a professor, et cetera. And uh, the latest manifestation of that is for the last uh, uh, four to five weeks, I've taken a leave of absence from academics just for writing. And it's writing in the area that we talk about here in terms of integral recovery. And I'm going back uh, uh, to my position um, uh, for a very brief stint before I actually plan to sacrifice working in academics formally. I, I imagine forever. I don't, I don't imagine that's going to turn back. Life can surprise us, but this itself is a huge surprise, is that what's emerged in the last five years, and I'd say especially in the last uh, year or two, John, working closely with you and then with our, our journey of integral recovery here, is it's really opened up for me a tremendous font of creativity and desire to give back for all that I've received from, you know, from you two gentlemen, uh, along with our community. And so in that spirit, then, I, it, it, it's made me think of the sacrifices that required letting go in order to serve uh, a deepening and a, a broadening of carrying, carrying a message forward. So let me leave it at that. It's just been on my mind. It's also significant that it's in the new year. And so it's a time of of uh, sometimes uh, are making resolutions to let go of old things and to, to open into new things. And this is a big one for me. It's a life changer for me and I'm right in the midst of it. 
Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm a six on the Enneagram and I NFP also in the Myers-Briggs, which I know less about. And I want you to explain to me more in detail. One about day we shall. I'm happy to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> John, you're an INFP. That's, we got three INFPs here. Oh, no <laughs> wonder we so weird. Oh, my Lord. That, that is so awesome. Weird. That is wild. That is um, wild, Doug. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's a trip. So anyway, but being a John, six, you're John, a trooper. John, John, let me yeah. insert something real quickly. It's a postscript to what Doug just said. Doug, before you came on today, John and I were talking about this. And the crazy part is that John and I operate actively out in the world. And so many people would perceive me and maybe you, John, as extroverted. The fact mm-hmm. is, is that I, I am blessed that way and I'm grateful to do that, but it exacts huge cost. And so I've always got to retreat back into my... Uh, inner world in order to kind of regenerate. And I was sharing with John that when the three of us were up together at Palo Alto, it was a real lesson in this for me, Doug, is that all three of us would get up in the morning and we'd retreat in our respective caves, so to speak, by working out and by meditation and so on, in order to go out into the, the conferences that we were involved in. A lot was being asked of us. We were mingling with people. And I watched both of you engage fruitfully with others, but I was very aware that it was bookended by time of retreating, both in the morning and in the evenings when we return home. So in that spirit, we're both introverts, John, but people wouldn't necessarily see it that way because we're both yeah. very actively engaged. And Doug, you can pipe in however you want to with that. I won't speak for you, but I, John and I just talked about it right before you came on today. I'll, I'll try to pipe in, but uh, you sure you're done there, Bob? Anyway, no, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just getting wound up. and it, Oh, wow. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've often quit. I'm, a, I'm an introvert with extrovert gifts. You know, it's like, uh, you know, my, I'd rather be left in my, my own little monk's cave up on the mountain, but you know, I'm called mm-hmm. to be on the world. So anyway, mm-hmm. like Doug, <laughs> what do you got? Well, yeah, um, we, we go out into the world and we sacrifice. We, we do what we need to do to give back, but it has become just crystal clear to me lately how important those bookends are and and how things can start to deteriorate rapidly uh without it um and in the new year in this time of change it's i think critical to have those reflections to take good stock of where we are and what's going on in our lives in order to make sure that we're doing that um i personally have come to a place lately where i realized that uh some of the things that were keeping me sane and keeping me functioning and keeping me able to come out and, you know, produce the work I've been doing on this podcast and with I awake and in other areas of my life, I, I wasn't getting the, the recharge time necessary. And it is certainly my resolution in this new year. And I have taken steps toward that end to make sure that I am adequately getting that, that alone time, that time to connect with spirit, to take care of myself, to put on my own oxygen mask as it were, so that I can go out and, continue to make the sacrifices necessary and do this work that has become such an important part of my life. Um, we have said before on this podcast too, and, and John, you have absolutely uh, made, it, made it clear, I think, that in, in recovery, the most important job we have is taking care of ourselves and taking care of our recovery. And that's especially true in the beginning phases of it, but it remains true throughout that you know, when we're not keeping our lives in balance, we're not able to make those sacrifices and and continue to build on on the tremendous blessings that we have received in recovery and sobriety and in life. Well said, Doug. Well said. And I completely support, as you know, your resolution for more balance. Uh, it's something that John and I are equally committed to. And your sharing with me, as you have, Doug, has inspired me to reflect more on it. I've reflected on it these days. That's, that's how this, even this, uh, this idea of sacrifice has kind of risen up for me, realizing that there's always a sacrifice to maintain a fidelity to our recovery and also to recharge, as you put it, for the good work that we want to do. So I want to thank you for that. As uh, It's been a real gift to me. You're bringing your own commitment is, uh, is marinating inside of me and making for some real substantial differences too. So thank you, Doug. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me... Let me add to that that's what I was going to say a while back and soon I pick up this thread you know being a six it's the one of the the on the Enneagram counterphobic six in this case uh 
one of the titles or one of the names or a couple of names is trooper and loyalist, you know? So the idea of sacrifice has always been, you know, my heroes were soldiers and tough, yeah. you know, guys that gave themselves Jesus, you know, for, for the good of the people and everything. So that's always been a, a, a big part of, uh, of my character, or at least what I hope would be my character. And, um, but I've also, you know, I know that's kind of my stick. And, 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 well, let me say this. When you go to the gym, when you do your practices, I think it's really important at some point if you can anchor your practice and why you're doing it. You know, Doug, in your case, or in my case, and all our cases, for our children, for our children, grandchildren, you know, for my, my wife, for my, uh, you know, my community, you can just keep expanding that. And this is why I'm doing that. And this is why it matters. And this is why my life matters. And so, uh, you know, I may feel bad. I may be going through a hard time. I may be going through grief or stress, but I've got to keep showing up, you know, showing up to take care of oneself. And in that way, you know, you can, you can have a nice noble idea of sacrifice, but if you you haven't sharpened the sword, if you haven't oiled the armor, if you haven't got your horse fed and in shape, you know, and your lance ready when the time to show up happens, you're just not going to, you're going to fail and go, wow, I screwed up. Well, yeah, but you didn't, you weren't prepared. And I always had this idea, you know, I don't know if I have any goal or mission in life, but I'm going to live my life as if I did. So I'm going to work hard, listen to those smart people, ask the deep questions, read the good books, exercise, do what I have to do, what I know at this stage of my life to, to get me there. And then if I ever get the phone call, you know, I'll say, okay, I'm ready, you know? And uh, I think that's a, a good thing. And I think also think it's good to, you know, once we kind of, know what we're sacrificing for as far as our relationships and loved ones. And we have to find what that goal is, what that point is with, that we're being told to do with our lives. And then, you know, put that all together. And, and the cool thing, it's not just oh, a gritty sacrifice, but what happens when we do that, that begins to lead us into authentic happiness, you know, not fake happiness, not uh, drug induced <laughs> happiness, not, you know, euphoria for the moment or for the day or for the evening, but the real deal ongoing uh, on authentic happiness. Like I got it. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And yeah, yeah, I'm still a wreck. Okay. I'm not perfect, but somehow I've become a, uh, it's easier for me to do this thing because I've made the sacrifices necessary. And at a certain point, as you know, the practices themselves become a joy and an ecstasy. You know, it's like, man, yeah, I'm in the gym again. It's no longer, or I'm meditating again. This is exactly what I need to be doing and where I need to be. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I want to respond, if I may, uh, Doug, will you give me permission here just to dive in? I, yeah. I want to hear from you too, Doug. I had an experience this morning, you guys, that, that uh, I, I, I get up early. I went in, I went in to warm up my muffins and uh, make my tea. And I had this welling up inside, uh, Doug, and, and John had this well, well, welling up inside of joy. And I was aware of it as it welled up. And what I was looking towards is I was going to be able to sit down and have my quiet time including meditation and some writing time, some self-reflection. Right after that, I had a coaching session. And then right after that, I get to meet with you guys for three hours. And, and, uh, and then after that, I get to meet with another gentleman. And then I get to go play music this afternoon with my band in preparation for tomorrow's performance. What's there not to be joyful about? I just felt so grateful for that, is that all of this feeds and nurtures me. And I'll finish with this, John, is that I was so struck by the fact that it's not contingent on euphoria or a momentary high. I'm so used to that in my life, owing to my own history of addiction. And to feel this organic uh, it, probably better to call it contentment, but I'll call it joy and contentment. That combination, that feel that welling up and it's in the morning and I am not great in the morning. It was all the more powerful to me that that was coming up. It was like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Crusty and all, I feel this huge joy. <laughs> what were you going to say, John? Well, one thing not to be happy about, or for my case, the resentment is you having muffins. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm on a carb-free diet right now and as soon as you said that we're mobbing mobbing anyway but the good news all right john uh, all right john so just to step to just to step in here john these muffins i think have zero carbohydrates in them it's pure okay. it's pure almond meal oh, <laughs> for you to know so enough. this is these are not normal muffins <laughs> hey but the good news is uh, i weighed myself at the gym and uh, I'm, i've been on this keto diet for like I want to lose it about 30 pounds, right? So I'm like lost eight pounds in all right. 13, 13 days. So yes, that's right. I do all the shopping. And I just go <laughs> and you look at all the hands and stuff. And oh my God, everything has sugar, man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Organic freaking milk. It's sugar. You know, yeah. everything 
your sugar. So you can't avoid it completely, but you bring it way, way down. Yeah. And then eventually you start kicking in and your body starts burning fat. I don't know what that has to do. Oh, it has to do with sacrificing. Yeah. Yeah. For me for to sure. get to be where I want to be, yeah. I got to make the sacrifices. And, you know, I've just, I've been, I'm hopeful because I want to get in better shape, you know, and yeah. I'm a really strong muscular guy and you guys will yes. take my word for it, but I got too much gut fat and stuff around me. When I trim down like 30, I'm going to be a badass. It's going to feel good. And you know, it's like I'm talking about this stuff and preaching it all the time. It seems like I can do the sacrifices necessary so that I'm walking my talk and taking care of the body as I should. So, mm, right on, so you know, talking specifically into the uh, upper right and upper left quadrants and their inner relationship with one another. Yeah. Uh, keto diet, ketogenic diet can be really, really hard at first. Um, I, I've noted I have done that uh, in periods of my life and felt really, really good while I was doing it. I felt um, clearer in my mind, and that helped my mm. psycholo- my psychology to function more efficiently. I, I felt good about myself and the world, and was able to be present and show up really well because my brain was operating better because I was eating well. You know, and that's a sacrifice you make in the beginning while your body is adapting to that change in where it gets its nutrient supply. As you're learning how to make ketones and do these things part of the cycle of stress and the cruel joke of nature is that sugar gives us a quick rush of energy, a quick burst of energy. And it's a, a common pattern. Part of what I had noticed myself slipping into lately is I had been eating a lot more sugar to hmm. help mitigate some of that stress in my life, which fueled this further downward spiral into a, a not great place. And so, yeah. you know, starting with the self, there's, in sacrifice and ever expanding in, in true integral fashion, transcend and include this expanding concentric circles start with taking care of yourself. And that starts with, you know, guess where I'm going guys, the four integral practices, taking <laughs> yeah. care of your mind, your body, your spirit and your emotions. And yeah, uh, taking care of one's body is absolutely critical there. And it yeah. ripples outward and affects everything yeah. allows us yeah. to show up and give back in all these ways uh, mm-hmm. to do the things that you're doing, Bob showing up and, and writing and really being present with mm-hmm. the wellspring of creativity that's coming mm-hmm. forth lately, playing your music, mm-hmm. you know, you're able to do those because you're taking care of yourself, John, everything mm-hmm. that you're showing up and giving right now in the podcast and I awake, you're taking care of yourself to be able to continue to do that. And so those sacrifices that start with, ourselves allow us to sacrifice in a bigger way as we give our gifts back to the world. Mm. Yeah. And, and I, I, one of the things, you know, I'm sure that everybody watches this uh, gets understands about you or perceives about you. You're a very sensitive, you know, mm. human being. And to me, you're like a Stradivarius or a 59 less Paul, you know, it's like, mm. but you know, instruments, especially fine instruments that create incredible sound, incredible music and all the things that you do, you got to really take care of them. Like they're really, you know, it's like, damn, this thing is a Holy grail, you know? And what is the Holy grail? The Holy grail is ourself, you know, because that's the vessel where we find God and that's the vessel where we give back into the world. So we just have to, to make sure that we're good stewards of our own welfare because otherwise we just become a part of the problem and not part of the solution anymore. So again, Mm -hmm. self-care, self-care, self-care. How do we do that integral cover practice? And of course we get the support of our communities, our brothers and sisters and the people that are there for us. And we put that together in a lifelong thing. And, and, uh, Mm -hmm. and then when we fall off, off the wagon, you know, with either practice or we relapse or whatever it might be, then we just get back up, you know, Mm -hmm. and no freaking shame. You know, and I like we've had these conversations about shame, and I think, and I love you guys both so much. And you talk about your personal shame. It's like, you know, God, I feel like I'm much worse than you guys put together, probably. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've learned just to accept my my foibles and my imperfection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, what else is new? But let's see if God can use me today, right? You know, and let's <laughs> clean up the messes I've made in the last week and keep going. So uh, I think uh, one of the one of the uh, resolutions to shame or perhaps even even getting back to sacrifice or, or sacred fying is uh, self-acceptance which gets down to self-forgiveness which allows you then not just to keep doing this stuff but to work on it and be a little better you know and if we can do a 50 40 60 percent improvement you know that's pretty good that's pretty good you know so anyway i don't know what i got on that but you just made me think of something john i've never put this together till you connected sacrifice with acceptance i remember reading years ago eckhart tolle talked about forgiveness and he said forgiveness is the relinquishing of resentments 
and you think about forgiving someone else, but now the way you talked about it, John, to relinquish the ego that would never forgive myself, to relinquish, to relinquish the resentments, uh, 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 that's, I, I, it, just, it just came to me, that, is that in terms of sacrifice, what I'm sacrificing when I forgive myself or accept myself, you wouldn't think of that as sacrifice. No, I am. I'm sacrificing the ego that actually lives off of judging myself making myself into this solid entity that is blameworthy. Yeah. I'm going to have to spend some more time with that, but thank you, sir. That's, that's a beautiful connection between sacrifice and self-acceptance. Yeah. And when, when we, you know, when we begin to, to work through and let go of the shame, which is, you know, shame is not like guilt. You know, we, we often say, you know, guilt is feeling bad when you do something bad. Shame is just your bad period. Yeah. You know, but you yeah. can let go of that. Um, then we get freer. And, yeah. uh, yeah. The vessel, the channel yes. can be more open and more pure. So awesome, you guys. 